And welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you from Westlake Village, California. And what's going on today? Bitcoin is putting in a bit of a red candle. We're going to talk about why. And we're going to talk about uh, our upcoming Zoom event here, 6 p.m. on uh, 6 p.m. Pacific time. There is a link in the description below. And uh, yeah, what's going on in traditional markets right now? Uh, NASDAQ still trying to put in a bounce on the daily time frame. Uh, S&P up three. The Dow is down and has been leading the pack to the downside. We've got Dixie. Looks like it is rolling over here, um, which is more on the bullish side. We had some economic news come out today. Um, today, <clears throat> tomorrow's jobless claims and goods trades balance, um, along with the GDP, which is uh, supposed to be lower than the previous month. And with Amazon reporting a slowdown in deliveries, um, I heard some bullish news out there, like we might get a surprise from good old Jerome Powell on the rate hikes. And people that are wanting to prepare for that surprise, sorry, rate cut. Right. So if all of a sudden Powell comes out and surprises the market with a rate cut earlier than expected, we can see it is slightly shifted up. There's a 4% chance of a rate cut and 96% chance that we stay the same. Next meeting is going to be May 1st. So that's coming up here quick. Uh, May 1st is going to be Wednesday next week. Wednesday next week. And so let's see if Bitcoin can put in a bounce alongside NASDAQ. It is Wednesday, the middle of the week, the middle of the road. And um, yeah, you know, as long as Thursday is a down day for Bitcoin, the most down day in Bitcoin's history. Um, that is not the chart I wanted to see here. I wanted to see maybe this one here. Nope. Nope. The one that I started out with here. Let's go back. Let's go back in time here. Back in time. Back in time. Just reviewing the charts here. Reviewing the charts. That's the one. Okay, so we got a clear range established here and just wanted to bring back to our attention. We did have a perfect bounce to the 0.5. Back to the 236. Your next target up would be the 786 as long as we do not lose uh, specifically this level here at 63, call it 64,000 on a daily time frame. Uh, momentum will cross down today below 63, 246. So it looks like we're out of the woods for the moment and momentum can remain to the downside as uh, volatility is declining. So still expecting a bit of a mean reversion bounce. One more try to the upside, and then we play it from here to see if we get a rejection or not. Um, to me, this does look like a lower high, though, and uh, trend continuation, and perhaps we do get the swipe down to the 58.8 that we had been talking about. Um, that is also a possibility. But if Bitcoin is going to dig itself out here, you definitely want to see a break of the 618 some kind of a higher low and, uh, you know, maybe some dancing around here around the 786, but eventually a push upwards and onwards. Uh, kind of the next momentous target for Bitcoin will be about 80,000. Um, I do want to give the, uh, the odds to the bulls here with the moon phases. The bull moon just came into force here. And, uh, you know, the last few bull moons, right? If you would have bought the day of the bull moon, right? Second day, you would have had a wick down and then popped back up. Bull moon here pretty much took off and running right here, right? It took several days. You know, we're talking about a week's time here for eventually it to uh, really get going and dig itself out. Um, these kind of a wick... wick price action, right? Sometimes we come back and fill the middle of the wick, but... Um, yeah, as long as that $60,000 pivot holds, you know, more, a little bit slightly lower. I'm going to get rid of this here. Um, generally, I'm going to give the odds to the bulls here and be in favor of the bulls for the short term. Um, NASDAQ looking good for a bounce again. And Dixie is beginning to 
roll its way over here on the four-hour time frame. You can see it's attempting to put in that lower high. And uh, yeah, I'm going to get rid of those moon phases. And what else do we want to take a look at here? Just bringing it down on the shorter term time frames for Bitcoin. Back, back here. Let's get rid of the moons and just dig down a little bit deeper on the four hour time frame. See if we're getting any evidence of a particular bounce. I mean, that's Dixie. That does look like a nice double top for Dixie and I would expect pressure down and that would help us out here. Um, why are my, my symbols not, not giving me any love here? All right, so digging down on the four hour time frame for Bitcoin. You do have the silver cross present. You do have this uh, bit of a range low here. If we do close anywhere below this pivot here, uh, more specifically on the four hour time frame, back below 64,372, I would goose the odds in the favor of a move back down to 61,741 on the four hour time frame. If you do begin to see this uh, cross back down, the yellow 21 crossing the green 55 to the downside. That'll be your first warning sign that yes, things are going to roll over one more time. Um, and uh, it would not be unforeseen to fill the middle of this wick here on this big red candle. Um, and if you want to measure the middle, right, you can use the fib tool and you can find the middle. Um, so target one and target two. And let's just see how uh, now volatility is expanding from a low level on the four hour time frame. Jewel cells, stochastics are to the downside. Um, does and, and the RSI is now getting into the bearish control zone. Usually after being away from it for a while, you will get a bounce on the first pass. So we are going to see if Bitcoin can hold this level over the next 18 minutes. Um, just needs to bounce here. And let's see if we get any evidence on the hourly time frame that things could potentially turn around here. Um, any evidence of a reversal? The Stokes will cross up above 64.4 on the next hourly. So it doesn't look like it has enough juice to do it yet. Uh, getting a nice... And we're still above 10. So generally speaking, as long as this is above... 10 and the stochastic does cross back up that would be good on the hourly time frame we would just want to see volatility begin to decline and roll over maybe you know put in put in some kind of a low here I'll, i do want to check out the liquidation heat map really quick here uh liquidation levels on good old high block capital I just turned $140 into $1,300 over the last two weeks. Yes, it's possible in the land of cryptocurrency. My name is Chris Mitchell. I am the CEO of Crypt Courses, and I'm bringing you this video because I'm going to give you some really good information on how to buy, sell, and trade digital currency. Now, you've probably heard about a lot of people making a lot of money in crypto but you don't feel safe or intelligent enough to make the investment. That's why I created Bitcoin 101, how to stack sats using technical analysis. It's the crypto traders dream to starting your crypto journey. It's absolutely free. All you gotta do is click on the link in the description below and we will get you your free guide today. Uh, definitely something worth taking a look at. Um, and what else are we going to talk about here? Um, I, I believe we had a file coin trade set up that uh, is going awry at the moment. They're not all going to win. They're not all going to win. But if you know how to manage those trades at the end of the day, um, you are going to get more winners than losers. And a big topic we're going to talk about today or this afternoon is the risk management aspect and um you know what's the proper size uh to be trading with um a lot of people i think get this wrong especially in the beginning of their trading career and that's what results in a massive failure you want to think of trading as um it's not a sprint it is a marathon it is a marathon so you can see people are net short now on bitcoin 
So shorts will get uh, squeezed uh, to the upside here, and there's a lot of liquidity. You can see we're getting down below 100,000 here. Um, so total short liquidations, 232 to 134. Just curious on Mr. Filecoin, what is that looking like right now as we're going to take a look at that trade setup. People are now net short, so shorts are going to get squeezed all the way up into this area. If we can survive the day, if, if Filecoin can re reclaim the daily pivot, um, that will look good for a pretty sizable bounce. Um, what other ones do we want to take a look at? No, so just nailing it down. The hourly time frame pressure is still down, and the 15 minute could be here to save the day. And... Um, what am I talking about specifically? Well, do we have any bullish divergence? So price is making one, two, three lower lows, or call it two drives. At least I would expect a shot to the 21. Um, next level up would be uh, 65, 438 on the 15 minutes. Could you call this a W formation? No, um, but that is a bit of a reversal candle. So perhaps one more swipe down, as long as we don't have a candle body closure below here at 63.737 on a 15 minute time frame, I would say the bounce is getting ready and those shorts are getting ready to get squeezed. And, um, you know, lots of liquidity hanging out there for Bitcoin. Bitcoin, the other one, the other trade setup I do want to review is Mr. Arbitrum, because um, I know a few people are in that trade and want to probably get some clarity on what's going on with that. So again, a lot of liquidity hanging out here for the bounce at 66,500. 66,500, just curious to see what the heat map looks like as well. So you can go to the heat map and again, uh, the bright yellow areas is where the most liquidity is lying. And that is where the market maker is likely to push price uh, because they get paid when you get liquidated or he or she or them or they, whatever you want to call it. Uh, 67,300. So you would probably expect a bit of a sell um, up there at about 67 seven sixty seven eight somewhere in that zone and is bitcoin going to be able to dig itself out here and usually for a reversal to happen you want to see the w formation and what does a w look like well it looks like a w and essentially boom boom higher low just closing you can get a wick below there but you just don't want to get a candle body below that prior wick and that would be your first target, and then the second target probably going to be up there a bit higher around the purple 200. Uh, the reversal will take place when we close back above the purple 200. Uh, back above the purple 200 at 66,109. Again, this is if you are trading the shorter term time frame. So volatility is ticking up. We're getting a perfect little buy signal here. So uh perhaps perhaps the bulls are going to take back control as nasdaq put in a bounce s p and dow are trying to follow behind and um let's see back on to economic data coming out here this week so core pce prices i didn't know that was tomorrow gdp's tomorrow that's probably a big one and uh, jobless claims jobless claims you know um uh, we want those to be Higher than expected? Yeah, more jobless claims would be more uh, bullish for the market and more in line with uh, Jerome Powell possibly beginning to cut rates sooner than later. PCE price index coming up on Friday. So do we have anything on Friday? Personal income, personal spending, core PCE, core PCE on Friday. So two more days left in the week. Reminding myself, Thursday is typically a down day for Bitcoin. So as long as it doesn't get absolutely slaughtered tomorrow um maybe we get a bounce in for the weekend uh just kind of reviewing the week so so far 
This week, the market opened up Asia on, I, I believe that was Sunday afternoon. Sunday uh, puts in a few wicks along the purple 200. And then going into Monday, we rallied and sideways chop. Tuesday, Wednesday, putting in a reversal. So is this the midweek reversal? Um, do we get a complete retrace? So this was Friday last week, market closed. And uh, are we going to come back all the way down for the full retrace and restart it back up uh, for the following for the following decade of price action? <laughs> Just kidding. Talking about decades, uh, how about years? And that's the halving cycle. And if we look at the last halving cycle, you can see this was the halving. And... It wasn't until, which by the way, um, this volume indicator, you can see uh, volume does play a key in identifying when the breakout is happening. So we did break it out to the upside. So Bitcoin was trading at about 9,300. So you would look at this as the range, right? So just cleaning this up a little bit. So here's our range. Um, I'm going to get rid of this pennant kind of formation. And just note, you know, what happened? We're ranging in this area. And what happens? We break it and we come back and retest. And then the market begins to set the party off. When was it? Um, with a nice W formation, right? So there's your high volume candle. There's your W. Here's your closure above the middle wick and bang off to the races. Bitcoin goes from. So again, just recapping what happened here uh, for the having the having happened. How many days did we go? 78 days before a breakout. And then it breaks out, goes another almost 30 days. Yep, another 38 days. Then we retest the breakout level. And then it's off to the races. So uh, pretty much, you know, that, that could have been a bit of an outlier and, uh, you know, a bit of a lengthy time to be waiting, right? Because everybody thinks having coming, okay, up only from there. Yet it really took about 138 days or four months. What do you know? Four months, is it sell in May, go away time? Sell in May, go away. So what would that look like putting it on? Uh, so just putting it in perspective, right? For everybody that is not very patient, um, similar price action here as well, right? Uh, back in the 2016 having, um, I do want to get the exact date on this. When was the 2016 having for Bitcoin? 2016 having July 9th. Do I have it marked off correctly? No, I did not. July, June, July. There it is, July 9th. By the way, guys, play this on fast forward. Don't watch me sit here for, you know, so many hours uh, diddling around. Just play this on one and a half times speed. And that way you can get used to getting your daily dose <laughs> of Bitcoin advisors information on crypto. And you can see here, once again, there is our range. And Bitcoin ranged for how many days until the breakout? 160 days. So the first one was 138 days. I'm going to write it down, 138 days. Second one was 160 days, right? So I am just going to mark this off here. 
And to be quite honest, you know, Bitcoin ranging could line up for some of the altcoins to really start to pump um, when Bitcoin ranges. Uh, that is, and again, we, we talked about this on the channel is like, likely Bitcoin's going to do either a test of the upside and then to the downside. We thought it was going to be the upside first, but it tested the downside first. So now what's most likely to happen, right? We dig ourselves out, test the top side, maybe sell off one time and then and then the breakout happens, right? But again, timing wise, this was from July to wow. And yeah, I mean, could you call this the breakout? Maybe, you know, but we definitely uh, had some boring price action during the summer, right? For Bitcoin during the summer. It was not a lot of fun. It was a lot of sideways and chop. And uh, that was the 2016 halving. Let's look at the 2013 halving. When was the 2013 halving? <sighs> having date, cycle one, November 2012. November 28th. So we were pretty close on that one. November 26th. Okay. November 28th. Close enough is close enough. Boom. All right. And again, um, the range doesn't look like much here, but um, there's the range prior to the having. Pretty big range, but I'm just trying to, you know, give a little comparison here. How many days did it take to really, to really break out above the range and start sending to the moon? Again, this was the beginning of Bitcoin land. Um, the very beginning. Let's see if we can get a box here. So the halving happens. Bitcoin did explode. But the real explosion did not happen for how many days? 44 days, 44 days. So a little bit faster of a cycle there. So if we take the average time, 44 days, 130 and 160, let's do them in consecutive order. So it was 44, 160 and 138. But again, uh, breaks the range, come back for the retest, and then it's off to the races. So just um, just a little food for thought there. There's only been three Bitcoin halvings. Every uh, halving has resulted in a macro bull market in which Bitcoin does come up and test the uh, 4236 FIB. Uh, we got the 4236 there from the macro high to the low here. Boom, test it there. Uh, boom, again, tested here, boom, and the last one here, right? Boom. So that is our final destination look for Bitcoin. You know, does it hit 240,000? Um, I think actually Bitcoin needs to go down first if uh, we want that target to get hit. So just, you know, kind of playing with the numbers here. Again, the range to the upside, 72 to the downside. 60, um, if we do break out, I would expect a retest of the range at 72 and then some kind of a massive breakout um, somewhere between, call it 350 divided by three. Where's my good old calculator that does really big numbers? 350 days, or actually I'm gonna give us an exact number. 44 plus 138 plus 160, that's all, th so yeah, about. 44 plus 138 plus 160. Call it 350 days. Why isn't it adding right? 44 plus 138 plus, that's, something's wrong with my calculator, guys. What is going on here? Um, 138 plus 160. It's not 294. Oh, it's because this GT figure. So let's see, 130 plus 160. That is wrong. Something is wrong with my calculator.
Well, we're going to go with 350. 350 divided by th three is going to be 116 days. So 116 days. Does that get us through the summer? That's summer in August. So maybe the, uh, the idea is correct. Sell and go away. Uh, we chop it around for the summer and then see if Bitcoin can pick itself up by its bootstraps towards the end of the year uh, or the at least the third quarter. Um, that's that's what we're hoping for. And uh, with that said, I think I shall take a look at the ARB token. Uh, token trade setup for a minute. Where is it? So we're looking on the daily time frame, and currently uh, this is based on candle body closures. If we do close anywhere below this line, that would be your ideal uh, get out of the trade moment. Um, this one did not play out so well. Um, file also doing the same thing here. Doing the same thing. Now on the plus side, um, if you are in the trade and we can reclaim, you know, we got we got eternity left in crypto land right now. Uh, we are bouncing off the 618. I probably will uh, hold this one for another day personally. Um, but if we can reclaim the pivot there at 626 by the end of the day, that would be a very, very good signal that uh, things are going to play out in our favor. If not, you know, you got to take some losses. You got to take some wins. And that's why risk management is very, very important. And risk management just doesn't mean your stop loss. We're going to be going over that along with a slew of other things this afternoon. Uh, what are we going to go over? I had a list here. Risk management, number one, how to set up a Blowfin account, a non-KYC account, so you can enjoy some of the benefits of trading how to join Discord, entry, exit, risk management, trend momentum and volatility, crypto courses, Bitcoin having cycle, trade signals, meme coins, and there is a link in the description below to join us. Again, that is 6 p.m. Pacific time. Hope to see you there, and uh, I hope you have a blessed and highly favored rest of your day. Take care.